Hello and welcome back to the stars everybody. Today we're going to be going over all of the rifles in Starfield and we're going to be ranking them in our tier list. Rifles have the largest amount of weapons to pick from out of any of the weapons. I believe the only other one that comes close is the handguns which we've already talked about. So let's begin with our very first one and probably the first one that you're going to find which is the Grendel. The Grendel is the P90 or the Space P90. It still kind of looks like a P90 and pretty much functions like one. This one is very common to find. You're always going to find Grendels laying around. They hold a lot of shots, they have a fast rate of fire, they have basically no recoil, which is pretty good. Nice iron sights, pretty good sights if you want to put a scope on this as well. They shoot fast, they have actually a lot of modifications as well. They don't do very much damage per shot though, and that's kind of where this becomes a problem. Because at least early on into Starfield, you might be running into ammo issues. Later on, it's usually not a factor because you might have four or 5,000 ammo just by looting raiders with this. So later on, not a huge deal. And it's by no means a bad weapon, but I don't think it's an amazing weapon either. I would say that the Grendel is probably like a C tier weapon. I think it's fine. I think it does the job just fine. There's nothing particularly bad about it. You're probably going to get the upgraded versions of this as it goes on. And we're not going to be specifically talking about them, but they do start popping up sooner. And we're also not going to be taking legendary effects into account because, yeah, if you get this with like the Relentless and Rapid Fire and a larger magazine, it becomes really strong, but so does any other automatic weapon. Now, this is just based weapons and the Grendel, I think, is a very middle of the road gun. Does everything well. It's fun to use. It feels good to use, but it's not gonna be super strong even if you build specifically for it unless of course you get a strong legendary version of it in which case then by all means use it because that could easily be s tier just like every weapon in this game could be for our next weapon we have the maelstrom the maelstrom is basically the space ak slash m4 it it's kind of both mashed together and sort of its own thing this one is the space assault rifle this one shoots the 6.5 millimeter cartridge which is one of two weapons that fire that i believe this one and the kraken this one is super common to find. Raiders have this all the time. Spacers have it all the time. Basically, any space mercenary has this all the time. Vendors always sell this gun. They also always sell the ammo. Same thing goes for the Grendel. Like, the 7.77 is super common. This one, just like the Grendel, though, is an okay gun overall. It does low damage, although if you do set this or the Grendel to semi-auto, it can get a little bit more damage per shot, so early game, that can matter when you don't have the most amount of ammo. Later on, you're going to probably have a ton of ammo for this, and you can always buy it from vendors, so that's really good. It's fairly accurate, holds a decent amount of shots, has nice iron sights, has good upgrades for it as well, and just like the Grendel, you're probably going to get like the unique versions of this, or the upgraded versions, the tiered versions, I guess, of this much more often than other weapons, and it does its job just fine. Again, nothing incredible, so I think it's also going to go into C tier, probably on par with the Grendel. Maybe a little bit higher, because honestly, the Grendel still shoots 7.77, and there are other guns that use that. Whereas the only other gun, at least caliber-wise, that the Maelstrom is competing with is the Kraken, and I think it is a bit better than the Kraken overall. Uh, unless you're going with a dedicated pistol build, in which case then, ignore that. And just like the Grendel, if you get really good mods with this thing, or if you get uh, a lot of legendary effects on it, then this can easily jump up a couple tiers or all the way up to S tier if you get something insane on it. The drum beat is our first 11mm gun, and the drum beat is pretty decent. It does fairly low damage, unless again you change it to semi-auto, but I like the full auto version too because you can get a large magazine for this and it does have a high rate of fire. It does pretty good damage per second, and it has some pretty cool mods to it. The problem I have with like the 11mm round is that almost all three of the guns that use it feel kind of the same-ish to me. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because they're all decent, but I don't think that they're anything incredible most of the time. Unless again you get really cool legendary effects. And the drum beat I think is just kind of like a B tier weapon. I think it's decent all the way around but nothing super crazy. Our next weapon is the Equinox. The Equinox is the laser rifle. One of two laser rifles in the game, this and the Orion are two of them. This one does okay damage per shot. This one does benefit heavily from mods similar to the Solus. So that's kind of just how energy weapons work. It is very accurate. It has nice sights on it. It holds a decent amount of shots, holding 20 base. You can change this. You can either have it semi-automatic or fully automatic if you would like. You could have fire lasers on this. You can do quite a few different things with the laser weapons, which is pretty cool with mods. We're not going to be taking that super into account here, but it, it is an option if you want to be modifying this. Overall, it's a pretty good weapon, and there's a lot of customization that can be done with this. I think the base Equinox is probably like a high B tier or a low A tier one of those two it's it's pretty good like the extra range that it has the fast follow-up shots the good rate of fire the zero recoil is amazing so if you're heavily wanting that for like medium range 
then the Equinox is really, really good, and it can be pretty good at very close range too, even when enemies are trying to melee you, because it can follow up its shot so quickly. Up next, we've got the Beowulf, and the Beowulf is basically like if you took the P90 and scaled it up to a rifle, and it's pretty good. It fires the same round, it fires the 7.77 millimeter caseless, so it is a super common round to find all over Starfield. It's also not difficult to find Beowulfs once you start getting some levels into Starfield either. Like, spacers can have this, mercs can have it, you can find it just in uh, arsenals and armories and stuff. Vendors sell it pretty often too. It holds a decent amount of shots, holding 30 base, so not quite as much as the P90. Although this one is more common as a semi-auto than a full auto, but it can be either. It's got really nice sights, it's got very low recoil. It's probably one of the best cheap weapons to use just to clear up small things as well, because you can find tons and tons of the 7.7mm rounds and they're all pretty good. It also has a lot of customizations you can do. It's fairly accurate at long range. Overall, the Beowulf is actually just a really solid weapon, and I think I'd put the Beowulf up into A tier. I really enjoy this one. It might not be on the high end of A tier, it might be on the lower end of A tier, and maybe the Equinox could beat it out in certain situations, especially if you built like laser weapons, but the Beowulf is pretty consistent across the board. Then we have the Lawgiver. The Lawgiver is likely the first sniper rifle that you're gonna find, and this one shoots the 50 cal round. This one is a semi-automatic weapon. It's only semi-automatic and it holds six shots. It does have a okay reload speed, a decent rate of fire, it actually shoots fairly quick, and it does do high damage for when you get it. Unfortunately, it falls off super hard compared to the other sniper rifles, so once they become available, this one just kind of disappears because there's no reason to use it unless you just really like the aesthetic of it. This one I used for quite a while in my very first playthrough and I managed to get a really strong legendary version of this. The regular Lawgiver is perfectly fine though too. Early on to the game, I would say that this thing is probably A or B tier. I'm steering more towards B tier. Later on, this thing is probably like C tier. It's just not as good as the other snipers. So I think I'm going to put it at the top of C tier. The aesthetics for it are awesome. I, I think it looks very unique. But for actual like functional purposes, I don't think it's very good and it's not the strongest 50 cal round. So it does have competition with the other rounds that it's using. Up next we have the old earth assault rifle, which is the AK. And this one is kind of cool. It is the only gun that shoots the 7.62 by 39 round. So they did get the cartridge right in this, which is kind of surprising for Bethesda, but okay. They have that and it's not bad overall in terms of everything. It does okay damage per shot. It does pretty good damage per second. Its rate of fire is okay, although it feels a little bit off for an AK compared to other games. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Sights are pretty decent. It has surprisingly low recoil, even when you have the stockless version of this. The only problem with it is finding like 7.62 by 39 ammo. That's not a super common ammo type to find. Vendors don't have it too often, so you can't always stockpile a bunch of this, at least easily you could if you just go to vendors that do have it and then wait like the 72 hours or however long it is, maybe it's 48 hours in this game, for the vendors to refresh and then you can buy more of it. That is an okay option. There are a couple places, a couple robots that ha can have this too, as well as the 9x39, which we'll talk about in just a second with the <laughs> old earth hunting rifle. I've never been super impressed by the AK in this game, but it's okay. I think it's a little bit better than like the Maelstrom, at least once you have a decent amount of ammo. The Maelstrom might be better just because you can get a whole lot more ammo for it though. So I think I'd put the AK in like B tier. I think it's on the lower end of B tier. Not as good as these two, but it's okay overall. Then we have the old Earth Hunting Rifle, which is the Vinterez. And this one is pretty cool too. I like that this is in the game. This shoots the 9x39 round. It is always suppressed and it always has a scope on it, which is fantastic. It holds 20 rounds in it base. That is really cool for a sniper rifle. It's semi-automatic. It shoots fairly quick. It's fairly accurate. Ammo can be an issue as well. 9x39 is not super common to come by, although you may not need as much of that as you would like AK rounds because this is more of a sniper rifle, so you're going to be using it more in a sniper roll. It is pretty good in the early game, and I would say it's potentially even better than the Lawgiver because the larger mag size in it is pretty good and the fast follow-up shots make it pretty decent even when enemies are getting to that close and medium range, whereas the Lawgiver isn't as good at those ranges. It's still okay, but not as good as this one. The same kind of problem applies to it though, as to when the other two snipers become available, this one falls off pretty hard. Or if you turn a Beowulf into a sniper rifle, this one also isn't as strong as that because the ammo is just not an issue with the Beowulf. This one just, it becomes more of an issue, so I would also put this one into B tier. It's good when you can get it early on, and sometimes you can find vendors that sell this really early on, 
but as the game goes on, it's gonna fall out of favor pretty quick. Then we have the Orion up next. This is the other laser rifle, and this one's basically two laser rifles attached together in this gun. This gun, I think, always comes with a scope as well, which is kind of cool. This one has very low recoil. It's fairly accurate, although it's not as accurate as something like the Equinox because sometimes one laser might hit, but the other laser might go wide and they're not always connecting where you would like them to. So that is a little bit of an issue, but it does do more damage per shot. It can do more damage per second. It doesn't have as fast of a rate of fire as something like the Equinox, but it has a lot of the same mods that you can put on the Equinox, which is great. And it shoots the same cartridge too. It shoots the three kilovolt uh, laser cartridge, which is kind of nice. So both of those are shared. This one I would just say is usually better than the Equinox with certain exceptions, again, with like legendary effects, or if you want a more accurate, longer range energy weapon. And of course you could use both of these because if you're just using the Equinox as your sniper rifle and then you're using your Orion as your general purpose gun, I think both of them work really well in those two roles. And I would put the Orion like high up into A tier. I think it's really good. I might put it above the Beowulf. I'm not sure. It's really common to find ammo for this too. So ammo is not an issue either. Then we have the AA-99. This is kind of more of a standard assault rifle. This is also an 11 millimeter gun. And just like what I said with the drum beat, all the 11 millimeter guns kind of feel the same-ish and they all feel pretty decent. The AA-99 is probably one of my more favorite guns. It doesn't have as high a rate of fire or something like the drum beat, but it does do more damage than it. This one can be full auto or semi-auto. It has some pretty good mods to it. Uh, it has a pretty satisfying reload animation too. You can find these often with scopes, although they don't come with a scope by default. The iron sights are still pretty good with it though. And the AA-99 I would say is probably my favorite of the 11 millimeter guns, but I still don't know if I'd put it higher than B tier. I, I think I'd still put it in like B tier just above the drum beat. I, I think it's the better of the two, but both have their pros and cons and depending on what mods you get or what legendary effects you get on a both can be really good and then we have the nova blast disruptor which the nova blast disruptor is not really that great at least if you're playing the game normally and you intend on killing enemies the disruptor itself is supposed to knock out enemies it's supposed to be a non-lethal weapon so if you're playing a pacifist run this thing is probably like s tier then since then, at least you can shoot enemies and you can feel like you're doing something during combat, but you don't actually need to kill anybody. But in just regular combat, basically every other weapon is going to be more effective than this if you don't care whether you need to kill or not kill. It is good on certain mission types where it's like, I just want to stun some enemies if I'm trying to get information. There's uh, one quest in particular with Ryujin that gives you one of these where you're not supposed to kill any of the employees. For actual killing though, this one is like D tier. It's just not really that good. I also wish it would hold more shots too. Five shots is just not enough to knock people out effectively. You shoot them with all five shots and you gotta reload and shoot them with like two more shots because by then the EMP status effect has already worn down. So it's just, it's kind of frustrating to use it even as like a pacifist weapon when you're supposed to be using it for that. Plus it uses the heavy particle fuse, which is the same thing that the Big Bang uses. And there's no way you're gonna use this over the Big Bang on basically any build if you want to kill things. Again, besides a pacifist build. So yeah, bottom of D tier, not a favorite weapon of mine at all. Then we have the Mag Shear. The Mag Shear is a full auto assault rifle type weapon. Does low damage, has a really high rate of fire. It's very accurate, sort of. It's almost like cheating because you just have to get something like within a big square. So as long as you can put that on an enemy, you can kill them very quickly with that. Even though this does do low damage, it has such a high rate of fire. And this thing has like no recoil to it as well. This does shoot the 50 cal MI array, which is different from the 50 cal from the Lawgiver. And that ammo is kind of difficult to find, especially if you end up using your mag shear a lot. That's like the one major con with this weapon. Everything else about it is pretty good. Um, well, maybe if enemies have armor and you don't have like armor breaking either with the skill or with uh, some mods on this, like armor piercing rounds, then it's not as good either. But against any soft targets or any lightly armored targets, this one just absolutely shreds through stuff. It is very satisfying. The legendary version of this is incredibly strong, but we're not gonna be talking about that here. Just the regular mag shear. I would put this one like top of A tier. I don't think it's quite S tier because like I said, without going into mods and without going into legendary effects, it can struggle against tankier enemies, enemies with heavier armor, enemies with a lot of health. This one doesn't necessarily kill super quick, especially if they have both of those then this one's gonna be a little bit less consistent, but still super long range, very high rate of fire, very accurate, very low recoil. It has a lot of things going for it. And then our next one is the Mag Sniper. 
And the Mag Sniper is probably going to be like the last weapon that you unlock in the game because you don't really see this until like level 50 plus. And the Mag Sniper is pretty insane. This does like the highest damage per shot out of any of the rifles here. It does one of the highest damage per shots out of any of the weapons. It is a long range semi-automatic sniper rifle. It does use the 6.5 millimeter uh, MI array, which is also different from the other 6.5 millimeter. Again, I don't know why they decided to change those. I don't know why they just didn't have this, say like railgun shots or something. At least then you wouldn't get it confused with anything. Uh, this holds a lot of shots for it as well. I think it always comes with a scope too. These are very rare. Uh, I haven't seen, I think, any enemies using this. It would be very terrifying if they were using it. Most of the time I found this from vendors or I found it in uh, rare loot crates. So it is a very uncommon weapon, but an insanely powerful weapon if you do get it. And I'd put this one like right up to S tier. It is crazy how much damage it does. It's even more crazy if you're going with like a sneak build and you're just sniping at people and using this as an engage because you can just clear up a fight before it even happens. And uh, kind of speaking of that same craziness, we have the hard target. The hard target is a, another semi-automatic sniper rifle. This one fires the regular 50 cal rounds the same way the lawgiver does. And this one completely blows the, the lawgiver out of the water. It isn't even close. This thing does so much damage. It does pretty decent damage per second because you can fire it fast. This one always comes with a scope. It's got plenty of mods. Its reload is kind of slow, but that usually doesn't matter with something like a sniper rifle. And I do wish you could more commonly get like a larger magazine for this. Uh, I haven't found any like uh, rare effects or legendary effects that have given it the large magazine size because 10 rounds in this would be amazing. And this one's also going right up into S tier. It might even be better than the Mag Sniper just because the ammo is so common. You're like never going to run out of shots with this. Because if you find anybody with a Lawgiver, they're probably going to have 40, 50 rounds on them. And 50 rounds with a rifle that usually kills in one shot is really really strong speaking of really really strong we have the mag pulse next so this one does have one major downside with it and that's that it uses the same ammo as the mag sniper and that's kind of its only real downside because aside from that it's really good this one is way easier to find though it's not too uncommon for mercs to have this it's also not too uncommon to get this uh from merchants or to get this throughout quest lines you are going to need to get some levels to unlock this one though i don't think it unlocks until like level 30 40 or so in the quest line so it's more common for enemies to have it. This one acts similar to the Mag Shear where you just have a big square that you have to put on an enemy at any given range and it fires and does a lot of damage. It's very easy to hit targets at really long range. It doesn't have a super high rate of fire like the Mag Shear. It's in between the other two Mag weapons. So fairly fast overall, I'd say. This one does good damage per shot, really good damage per second, holds a lot of shots in it. It works really well at medium range where it can just shred through everything. And so long as you don't also have the Mag Sniper on you, or even if you do have both of these, honestly, it's not that big of a deal because you're probably only going to be using the Mag Sniper to engage with and not a whole lot during fights. And even if you are, it's not going to use up a whole lot of your rounds. Then you can use this as your primary weapon. I would put the Mag Pulse also up in S tier, but on the low end of S tier. And the only reason why it's on the low end is because the Mag Sniper also exists. Then we've got the Tombstone. The Tombstone is the last 11 millimeter gun. And this one is also kind of in the middle for me. It's okay overall. It holds 20 rounds by default, which I don't really care for. I wish it held 30 since it is usually full auto. You can make it semi-auto. It does decent damage. It's fairly accurate, has low recoil. I think it always comes with a scope on it as well. And the mods for it are pretty good. Just like all the 11 millimeter rounds, I think I'm also gonna just throw this one into B tier. I think it's my least favorite of the three, but they're all pretty good compared to one another. Any of them are fine if you like using the 11 millimeter. Uh, I, I found that they all feels fairly similar to me and I just like the look of the AA-99 a little bit more and the way it feels a little bit more than the other two. Not to say the other two are bad though, I'm perfectly fine with using them as well. Then we have the Kodama, I believe that's how you say this. This is the nail gun, the space nail gun. <laughs> this one is kind of interesting. This one also fires the 7.77 millimeter round, same as the P90 and the Beowulf. And this one has an interesting effect where it also always counts as bleed damage on top of it. So it's basically always like flechette rounds and that can be pretty good. Bleed is just a good status effect in general since it can apply pressure to multiple enemies. It's good for dealing damage over time so it's good for long drawn out fights. And it works very well in most enemies with robots being the one exception where you can't bleed them. So this weapon isn't very good against robots but against everything else it's decent. This one has a fast rate of fire, low recoil. It has actually really nice iron sights on it too. Good damage per second, although low damage per shot, but then the bleed stacks up from that, so the bleed can make up for that. And it usually has an okay sized magazine. 
This one, I wouldn't say is as good as the Beowulf. I think the Beowulf is the best one for firing the 7.77, and I think the P90 is probably the weakest, so I'd put this one somewhere in the middle, but I think it's towards the high end of the middle just because of the bleed on it. Like, that's guaranteed. And then we have the Varun Inflictor. The Varun Inflictor is the only particle beam rifle, and this one has split damage because of that. It is very strong. It has very low recoil, it does good damage per shot, good damage per second, it doesn't have a super fast rate of fire, that usually doesn't matter because it, its accuracy is really good. At medium and long range this is really effective and at close range it can also be pretty strong. I guess the only technical downside that this one has is that it also uses the heavy particle fuse, the same thing as the Big Bang, and I would usually use the Big Bang over this, but even so I think this is probably one of the best rifles in the game and I think I would put this one up into S tier. It's really solid overall and honestly the last tier list where we had the shotgun, the Big Bang sh probably should have been up into S tier. Same thing goes with like the Breach, thinking back on it. I put them both in A because I didn't think that they were quite as good as the old Earth Pump shotgun but that felt kind of weird to me and I would probably move them up from now. The Varun weapons are actually really solid. The pistol is solid, the shotgun and the rifle is solid. I don't know if the Big, I guess the Big Bang isn't technically considered this but it's also really solid. And this is where I'd put all the rifles in Starfield. Tell me your thoughts down below. Up next, we're gonna be taking a look at heavy weapons, and then I might do one more list, just putting everything on here and seeing if I would change my mind, because these lists, I more try to compare them to the weapons in their own category, more so than all weapons, and it might be fun to do all weapons and just kind of put them up here and what I think. So tell me if you guys would be interested in that. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk to you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye-bye, everybody.